All right, welcome to episode number nine. And in this episode, we're going to cover die hybrid crosses. We're also going to come across the second of Mendel's laws. His first law was the law of segregation, which means the alleles will separate during meiosis. So like big T here, little t there. Okay. In a die hybrid cross, we're going to learn about the law of independent assortment. Okay, and the independent assortment says um, that the alleles for different traits will segregate independently of each other. Now, this one is only going to be used in a two-factor dihybrid cross. Di means two. And so what we're doing here is we're looking at two traits at once. So what this means in, for, for, uh, in plain English is you're looking at four letters. Okay, we're in a monohybrid cross, we were only looking at two letters, like a big T and a small t. So we're going to toss in a second trait in here. Now, this is the book definition, so you want to make sure you remember this one. But if you want to keep it simple, this is simply the FOIL law. If you remember FOIL from your math class, first of each pair, the outside pair, the inside pair, and the last pair, you're going to demonstrate the law of independent assortment. Okay? Now, remember, each gamete is going to get one allele for each trait. So they're going to get one of each of the two kinds of letters. <clears throat> Let's get rid of that. Okay. So what we have here, we have an individual. Let's try, let's go back to red again. We have an individual who is heterozygous for the first trait and they're homozygous, I'm sorry, they're heterozygous for the second trait. So this would be an individual who's big A, small A, and big B, small B. It doesn't really matter what these letters stand for, just the fact that they're different. Okay, so when we want to make gametes, and these will be all the uh, possible combination, you're going to use FOIL. Okay, so the first of each pair, big A, big B. So the first kind of gamete that you're going to make is going to be that. The O stands for the outside pair, big A, little b. The I stands for the inside pair, little a, big B. Now, this is the only time that we're going to put a little letter in front of a big letter. And the only reason for this is we've just put the A's in front of the B's. And then the L stands for the last of each pair. So that would be little a, big B. And those are your four possible gametes. So let's try this one again because this is real important. If you know how to do independent assortment, you can get Punnett square problems correctly. So we've got a pea plant who's heterozygous for tall, and we have a pea plant that's got yellow seeds. Okay? Now, remember, uh, yellow is the dominant color. So this individual is uh, heterozygous for both traits. So to find out the gametes, you do the first of each pair, big T, big G. So there's the first sperm cell. The second sperm cell would be the outside ones, big T, little g. Okay, the I stands for the inside pair, little t, big G. There's another sperm cell. And then finally, the outside or the last of each pair, uh, two little letters. So there we go. So we've just demonstrated two different times the independent assortment law, and remember, independent assortment essentially means foil that bad boy. All right, let's get rid of that, and let's move right along. In a dihybrid cross, you're going to do the same thing that Mendel did before. All right, so let's go with purple. So your P generation would be two different purebreds. So you could do something like this. Would be cross with that. Okay. The F1s would all be hybrids. Because this parent's going to give a big G, this parent's going to give a little G, this parent's going to give a big T, this parent's going to give uh, little T's. And then when you do the F2s, they're going to come out all different things. And you're going to get a phenotype ratio of 9 to 3, 3 to 1. Okay? And which means. Nine of them would show the dominant phenotype for both traits. Three would be dominant for one, recessive for the other. Uh, another three would be just the opposite, recessive for the first trait, dominant for the second, 
And finally, only one out of 16 would be recessive for both, all right? So when you're doing your F2 cross, your Punnett square is going to have 16 boxes. And before you freak out and think that's too hard, it's really not because i got one here to show you. There we go, all right? Uh, what we're doing here, we're doing rough and smooth and yellow and green. Um, I don't usually use Y's. They have a tendency to look the same. That's why I use the G's. Okay, so what we did here is we foiled them. Let's get a different color. Let's go with the red again. So as you can see here, we've got uh, smooth as a big R, wrinkled as a little R. Let's, let's write those over here. That's smooth. Little R is wrinkled. And then a big Y, which I don't like to use Y's. I like to use the greens better, or the G's for the greens and, and yellows, because big Y and small Y look the same. Um, that's going to be yellow. And then a little Y would be green. So that's what our letters mean. Okay, Both parents are heterozygous. So what we have inside our boxes, those will be our, represent our F2 generation. It says that down here again. Okay, And they did foil, first of each pair. Uh, the outside pair, the inside pair, and the last pair, same thing over here. And then it was just simply plug and chug. Now remember, we're looking for a 9 to 3 to 3, 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio, with 9 being dominant for both. So we're going to, we need to find ones who have at least one big R and one big Y. And you're going to find out that it's these guys right here. So it forms a little triangle. 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so now we're going to look for ones who are dominant for the first trait and recessive for the second trait. And you look at them, they're right here. One, two, three. Put an X right in there. Okay, so there's three. So now we're going to look for ones that are recessive for the first trait but dominant for the second trait. So in other words, they got two little R's, but they only need one big Y. And that's going to be these guys right in here. Boom, 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 and boom, boom, boom. So there's three of those. And then now we need to find how many are recessive for both traits. And in this case, all the letters would be little, and that's going to be that guy right there. So we can see that we've produced our 9 to 3. Whoa, I screwed that up. 9 to 3 to 3 to one ratio. And remember, this is a phenotype ratio. Now, the genotype ratio for this guy is really freaky, and we're going to do this just this one time. Okay? So, dominant for everything. One. That's a one right there. Okay? Uh, dominant for both. Dominant for the first trait, heterozygous for the second. Two. Okay? Uh, heterozygous for the first one, homozygous dominant for the second. Another two. All right. Heterozygous for both. One, two, three, four. This is a really crazy ratio. All right. Homozygous dominant for the first trait, homozygous recessive for the second, and that's the only one. So that would be a one. Okay, our next genotype would be uh, recessive, I'm sorry, heterozygous for the first trait, um, homozygous recessive for the second one, only those two right there. All right, recessive for the first trait, homozygous dominant for the second, only one. Okay, homozygous recessive for the first trait, heterozygous for the second, only those two. And then recessive for everything, only one. So you get the one to two to two to four to one to two to one to two to one ratio. And we're never going to try to figure that one out because that's ridiculous. We're just going to stick with this one most of the time. Okay? So that is how you do a dihybrid cross. So remember, just like what Mendel did before, the first set of parents were opposite purebreds. The F1s were all hybrids. You took the hybrids and crossed them. That's where you get this 16-box Punnett square. And when you cross two hybrids in a dihybrid cross, you always get this 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 phenotype ratio. So 
Until next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side.